1999, I was just 14 years old and just a kid, downloading songs on Napster, watching TRL on MTV, don't judge me, playing sports and going to school. But that summer, something happened. I, I went to Falls Creek, a Baptist church camp in Oklahoma with the church I'd been visiting for over a year now. What I experienced is hard to explain, but the result is not. I came home changed. At this camp, there are times of teaching and small groups and worship, which it wasn't new to me. I'd been in church before and sung songs. I, I was just used to, however, looking around and kind of mumbling the words, trying to follow along, but I was rather indifferent about worship. Now, there was a preacher there named Bill Gravel, and he shared the simple truth of the gospel, that I was separated from God because of my sin, but through Jesus, I could be forgiven of my sin and have a personal relationship with God. He shared that I could have hope and purpose in life, that I could know a God who loves me and gave it all for me. This relationship with God was exactly what I was longing for. So I prayed with a church counselor that day to yield my life to Jesus. I invited him in as my Savior and everything began to change. It's hard to describe what happened, but I felt different, lighter, free, uh, loved. Every evening at camp, we, we would have a time of worship and Bible study in our cabin at the end of the day. Now, I can still remember that the first night of worship after trusting in Jesus, just like it was yesterday. So we gathered in the cabin that evening. The music began to play. The lyrics began to be pre presented on the overhead projector. You know those things, the, the clear transparencies. You got to flip and move. Now, I looked around and I saw most of the kids and the adults doing what I did. They were just mumbling the words to the songs and trying to follow along. But for whatever reason, that night, something else was happening in my spirit. I, I couldn't describe it, but it was like the words and the music were leaping off the screen, entering into my heart, and then trying to pull something out, some kind of a response. So I leaned over to my older, wiser friend, Michael, who happened to be a Christian and a mentor in my life, and, and I asked him, hey, um, would it be okay if I raised my hands. Now, I don't know why I asked that, but I just felt like I needed to. And he said, what? <laughs> oh, um, you better not. It, it might be a distraction. So I was like, okay. So I put my hands in my pocket and I like, just kept on singing and started swaying and I, I couldn't help it. So I just pulled my hands out and I began to like cup them upwards and, and, and about waist level. And, and I still felt like this need to, to raise my hands, this, this rush of energy was filling my chest and I, it just had to get out. And so I asked Michael again, I said, hey, hey, Michael, are you sure? Would it be okay if I raised my hands? And by that time he leaned over and he said, oh, okay, I guess so. In that moment, my hands shot up in the air and some sort of release of freedom like I'd never experienced before came out. And the excitement, the feelings of joy and love and thanksgiving to Jesus that had been building on the inside now was able to be expressed on the outside as the actions of my body matched the intentions of my heart. The only way I can describe it is a worshiper woke up in me that day. Here's what I believe. Inside every one of us is a worshiper. Now you might be completely oblivious to it. Maybe you still haven't surrendered your life to Jesus yet. Maybe you do feel something when you gather in worship, but you kind of push it down. Maybe you're, you're like me, and during the musical worship, you, you look around, you see what others are doing and, 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 and how they're expressing worship, but you never really get the courage to express worship fully. It's time to wake up the worshiper in you. Do you remember the original definition of worship that we talked about earlier? Here's what worship is. It's that old English word, worth-ship, and it means ascribing worth or value to something. Now, devoting our life to God, living out every area in reverence to God, that's how we worship Him. We are saying that because God is worthy, 
we will spend every waking moment, every action, and every breath in worship towards Him. Worship is a lifestyle. But in addition to lifestyle worship, musical worship plays a huge part too. What we do corporately at church on Sundays and even alone by ourselves through music, singing, prayer, and praise, it is equally as important. The Bible actually commands us to worship God through music. Look at Psalm 96, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Verse 4 says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. Whether it's singing old hymns or modern praise and worship, a cappella or a full band, a single song leader or a full choir, it's, it's not the style or the genre of music that matters, but rather it's the attitude of the worshiper's heart. Paul says in Colossians 3, verse 16, he says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. In Isaiah 29, the the Bible says uh, this. In fact, God warns us not to worship out of routine, but with genuine heartfelt love and adoration. He said to the Israelites, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based merely on human rules that they have been taught. What a sobering thought. Here's a question. Am I worshiping out of routine or out of a heartfelt adoration toward my God? Several years ago, Cheyenne and I were newly married and I was working my first full-time job as a youth pastor at a church that I grew up in. Now, one day I decided to bring home to Cheyenne some flowers after work. At first she loved them. It was just a random act of love that made her feel valued and special. And so I felt pretty good about myself too. But then she began to ask some questions. Where did you get them? Here's where a good thing turned bad, real bad. You see, the flowers were left over from a funeral at the church that happened earlier that day. I learned a very valuable lesson. Flowers are a lot less special when they are someone else's leftovers. Let's be real for a moment. If we aren't careful, we can find ourselves giving God our leftovers in worship too. I get it. You've had a hard work week, maybe a, a crazy morning getting ready for church, and then by the time you get to church, you are exhausted. And now you have to stand up and sing. So you reluctantly, maybe you get up, you look at the screens, you go through the motions as you mumble a few of the lyrics. Well, let me remind you, just like my wife doesn't want my leftover flowers, God doesn't want our leftover worship. Too often we enter into church distracted and unprepared for what is about to occur. We're not thinking about the incredible worth and value of our God, so we don't put forth much effort to declare it to Him. We we act as if it's optional rather than commanded. In addition, we can even approach the musical worship portion of the service as if its only purpose is to prepare us for the main thing, the sermon. Now, you've got to understand this. that Worship is not just a warm-up for the sermon. Worship in itself is a pivotal part of our relationship with God, and it stands alone. It shouldn't take a song or two or three before we're really ready to worship God or receive a word from Him. We must come 
in prepared for worship because God is worthy of our worship. Get this, whether we feel like singing or not. True worship doesn't happen accidentally. It must be offered intentionally. And if we're, if we're not careful, we can find ourselves being spectators rather than participants in worship. Here's a few things to consider. When you walk through those doors, are you ready to present to God an offering of praise that is worthy of a king? Are you turning your mind and your attention to who God is and who you are in light of His holiness and perfection? Are you opening your ears and your heart to His leading, preparing yourself to encounter the presence of God through the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to respond to God no matter how or what He speaks? Are you dealing with the sin that He's laying on your heart and confessing it openly to Him? Are you responding through singing, through prayer, through lifting your arms, or maybe bowing and bending your knees, or any other physical act as the Lord leads? I remember a date I had with my wife several years ago. It was before we were married. It was going to be my last date with her before heading off to my first year of college. So I wanted to make it pretty special. So I asked some church friends if I could use their gazebo out at the lake for this date. So I went out early. I set up decorations and lights and put out flowers. I, I made a special mixed CD of our favorite songs. I, I looked up a, a great recipe and I cooked dinner. I made sure then that I, I got myself looking good and smelling good. I cleaned up my truck. Lots of effort to say the least for this date, right? Now, when I hang out with my guy friends, <laughs> do you think I put forth that much effort to prepare? No. Why? It's weird. And because I don't love them on the same level that I love Cheyenne. Think about how much effort I put into preparing for this date and how little effort that you and I can put into preparing to meet with the creator of the universe in worship. I think we tend to treat God much more like a casual acquaintance than the love of our life. I pray that you and I will never look at worship the same again. Worship is, is not casual. It's intentional. It begins with seeing God for who He is and what He's done. It continues as we see ourselves for who we are and we respond with confession and repentance. And finally, we respond in outward expression in worship to how God is moving in our hearts inwardly. So singing and lifting hands, bowing and bending the knee, all should be genuine reflections of a heartfelt love, respect, and honor toward our heavenly King, Jesus. These physical actions, they reflect the intentions of our heart. So how do you worship? No, I don't mean what's your style or your preference, but more importantly, what's the posture of your heart? And how have you prepared yourself to encounter God? Why don't you try this? Before you worship, whether publicly or privately, uh, at home or in a church service, take some time to prepare your heart and your mind to encounter God because He's worthy all of the time He's worthy of all of the praise and honor we can give Him. Let me finish with these words from Psalm 86, verse 11 says, Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God. With all my heart, I will glorify your name forever.